Young Tibetan monks undergo a rigorous curriculum, learning these ancient sutras, learning ancient healing arts of Tibetan medicine. But not all the scenes in monasteries like these are so serene. The Lavrong Monastery is now virtually under siege. There's a police presence on the streets. Well, Tibetan monks are very fearful of talking freely about what has happened. I did engage this monk. On the one hand, he wanted me to know what was going on. On the other hand, he was terrified for fear that that would get back to him. He led me to a group of monks, and they told me what was going on. After the riots, 20,000 Chinese troops surrounded our monastery. 5,000 of them entered and searched for monks who had participated in the riots. They had pictures of these monks. If you resembled the monks in their photos, you were arrested. But they arrested many monks for other reasons, if you didn't have an ID or even if you looked at them the wrong way. Over 200 monks were arrested and beaten. During April, the government organized a media tour of our monastery to show how peaceful things were. But about 17 monks came out and protested. They were allowed to demonstrate, but plain clothes army and secret police took photos of them. After the foreign journalists had left, the police came to arrest the monks who had protested. Most of them had fled already, but two were arrested. They still haven't returned, and we don't know what's become of them. We're living in a police state. Our phone calls are monitored, and we're scared of the military's presence. One of the tragedies of Tibet is that the two main actors, the, the Dalai Lama and the Chinese government, have been caught in a stalemate, and they've dug in their heels, and the real losers in this are the ordinary Tibetans. The Chinese government is manifestly clear that its policy has failed, that uh, Tibetans don't want to be part of China, they don't like Chinese rule. But the Dalai Lama as well, his policy has failed. He has managed to get international scrutiny, he's managed to win the Nobel Peace Prize and international acclaim, but he hasn't managed to protect his people from migration, from the rest of China into Tibet, and from cultural changes that really do threaten the, the life in Tibet. The Chinese government, by denouncing him, by essentially playing a waiting game and hoping that he dies, they're empowering young, more militant Tibetans who, I believe, are going to turn to violence when the Dalai Lama is gone. I think we saw some of that in the recent Tibetan protests. China has made incredible progress since I first visited here in 1983, but one area in which China feels absolutely the same is its treatment of some of these ethnic minorities. They're not willing to allow protests by Tibetans or by other minority groups. The challenge is one of the things that outsiders can push for is to allow those same kinds of protests and to, to reassure China that to allow protests is not a sign of national weakness, but rather a sign of, of self-confidence and national greatness.